Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the founder of Turkish Republic, who abolished the centuries-old Ottoman Empire in 1924 as prominent figure of history. While his achievements on the battlefield are well known but his actions as a leader are popular as well as controversial. In this video we will explore his rule as president in an unbiased manner so watch this interesting video till the end. When the Turkish Republic was established in 1923, Ataturk and his revolutionaries faced challenging ideologies of his time which were fascism, communism, and supporters of old caliphate system. He was able to protect his nation from these totalitarian ideologies by launching a mass-scale arrest and censorships in 1927 known as the 1927 detentions and imposing a one-party de facto regime in 1925 after the adoption of the 1924 constitution. The only political party of the Grand National Assembly was People's Party of Ataturk. The abolition of the caliphate was met with fierce opposition from conservative elements. However, Ataturk said, the religion of Islam will be elevated if it will cease to be a political instrument, as had been the case in the past. Ataturk aimed to integrate the powers of the caliphate into the GNA's powers, and with the consent of his colleagues, the caliphate was abolished on 3 March 1924. Following the abolition of the caliphate, Ataturk and his reformist allies made extensive efforts to separate governmental and religious affairs. One of their primary targets was the education system. In 1923, there were three main types of educational institutions in Turkey. The most common were medreses, which focused on Arabic, the Quran, and memorization. The second type of institution was Idadi and Sultani, which were the reformist schools of the Tanzimat era which began in 1839 and ended with the first constitutional adoption in 1876. The last group included colleges and minority schools that used the latest teaching models in educating pupils. Ataturk sought to modernize the old Medris education and promote a vigorously reconstructed educational system. He believed that educational reform was crucial for the liberation of the nation from dogma and declared that national education affairs were the most important and productive task of the day. To achieve his vision, Ataturk invited American educational reformer John Dewey to Ankara in the summer of 1924 to advise him on how to reform Turkish education. Ataturk aimed to prepare citizens for roles in public life through increasing public literacy and instituted compulsory primary education for both girls and boys, a task that has continued in the Republic to this day. He emphasized the importance of raising a generation that is nourished with what he called public culture and established a common curriculum for all state schools, known as the Unification of Education. The Law on Unification of Education was enacted on 3 March 1924 which made education inclusive and organized on a model of the civil community. Under this new design, all schools submitted their curriculum to the Ministry of National Education. At the same time, the Republic made clergy subordinate to the Department of Religious Affairs, laying the foundations of secularism in Turkey. While the unification of education ended the influence of clerics of the Ottoman Empire, it did not mean the end of religious schools in Turkey. They were moved to higher education until later governments restored them to their former position to secondary education after Ataturk's death. During Ataturk's time, the Ottoman Turkish language written in the Arabic script with Arabic and Persian vocabulary was in use. John Dewey estimated that it took about three years to learn how to read and write Turkish in the traditional Arabic script. In the spring of 1928, Ataturk met with several linguists and professors from all over Turkey to discuss his plan to implement a new alphabet for the written Turkish language, based on a modified Latin alphabet. The new Turkish alphabet was designed to replace the old Arabic script, which was too complex, making it difficult to learn. The Language Commission undertook the creation of the new alphabet with Ataturk's initiative. On 1 November 1928, Ataturk introduced the new Turkish alphabet and abolished the use of the Arabic script. The first Turkish newspaper using the new alphabet was published on 15 December 1928. Starting in the autumn of 1925, Ataturk initiated a campaign to promote modern European attire for the Turkish people. He was resolute in ending the sartorial customs of the Middle East and completing a series of dress reforms that had begun with Mahmud II. The fez had been introduced by Sultan Mahmud II in 1826 as part of the Ottoman Empire's modernization initiative. The Hat Law of 1925 replaced the Fez with Western-style hats. In 1934, he passed a law called the Law Relating to Prohibited Garments, which was centered on promoting modern Western suits with neckties, fedora, 
and derby-style hats, rather than traditional religious-based clothing such as the veil and turban. Although he personally endorsed modern dress for women, Ataturk did not include any specific references to women's clothing in the law, as he believed that women would voluntarily adopt new clothing styles. He was frequently photographed with his wife Latif Yusuklijal, who wore a head covering in accordance with Islamic tradition. He was also frequently photographed with women who wore modern Western clothing during public appearances. However, it was Ataturk's adopted daughters, Sabiha Goksen and Afe Inan, who provided a true example of modern style for Turkish women. He stated, the religious covering of women will not cause difficulty, this simple style of head covering is not in conflict with the morals and manners of our society. In 1924, Kurdish tribal chief Sheikh Said organized the Sheikh Said rebellion during the issue of Mosul negotiations. He opposed the government's anti-Islamic policies, including the abolition of the caliphate, civil codes based on Western models, the closure of religious orders, the ban on polygamy, and the new obligatory civil marriage. His followers seized government offices and marched on important cities, prompting the government to invoke the law for the maintenance of order in March 1925 to deal with the rebellion. This gave the government exceptional powers, including the authority to shut down subversive groups, and was repealed in March 1927. In 1926, a plot to assassinate Ataturk was uncovered in Smyrna, leading to a sweeping investigation that was used to undermine those who disagreed with Ataturk's cultural revolution. The main opposition party known as Progressive Republican Party was dissolved following the investigation's findings of a link between the party and the Sheikh Said rebellion. In the years following 1926, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk introduced a series of reforms that marked a radical departure from the Ottoman Empire's previous practices. He separated Islamic law from secular law, confining it to matters of religion, an unprecedented move in history. Ataturk believed that it was necessary to free the concepts of justice, legal institutions, and laws from the outdated practices that were incompatible with modern society. To that end, he passed a new Turkish penal code modeled after the Italian one on 1 March 1926 and Sharia courts on 4 October 1926. New Turkish civil code was passed in 1926, modeled after the Swiss civil code, which granted women equality with men in matters such as inheritance and divorce. Ataturk viewed education as a critical component of women's liberation, and he stated that if women did not participate in the social life of the nation Turkey will remain backward. Ataturk believed that culture was the foundation of the Turkish Republic. He initiated extensive research on the pre-Islamic culture of the Turks and emphasized the importance of Anatolian civilizations such as the Phrygians, Lydians, Sumerians, and Hittites. He named banks such as Sumerbank and Edebank to attract public attention to past cultures. Ataturk stressed the importance of the folk arts of the countryside as a wellspring of Turkish creativity. When the modern Republic of Turkey was founded in 1923, two of the key founding principles were nationalism and secularism. To achieve this, Ataturk's government implemented policies of Turkification and nationalization. For example, the Citizen Speak Turkish campaign, initiated in the 1930s pressured non-Turkish speakers to speak Turkish in public. Another example of nationalization was the surname law, which required Turkish citizens to adopt fixed, hereditary surnames and prohibited names of foreign cultures, nations, tribes, or religions. This policy led many ethnic Armenians, Greeks, and Kurds to change their surnames. Additionally, non-Turkish geographical names within Turkey were replaced with Turkish names. Throughout his adult life, Ataturk had a known habit of consuming alcohol and tobacco, regularly consuming about half a liter of Reiki per day and smoking cigarettes. In 1937, signs of deteriorating health started to emerge, and in early 1938, while on a trip to Yalova, he fell seriously ill. He was taken to Istanbul for treatment, where he was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver. Despite his illness, he made a concerted effort to maintain his regular habits and lifestyle. However, his condition eventually worsened, and on 10 November 1938, at the age of 57, he passed away in the Dolmabahce Palace. In 1951, the Turkish parliament under the control of the Democrat Party, led by Prime Minister Adnan Menderes, passed a law known as the Law on Crimes Committed Against Editor. This law made it illegal to insult the memory of Ataturk or to damage or destroy objects that represent him. 
Ataturk did not always appear to be a Democrat in his actions, but Ataturk supported the idea of building a civil society. Ataturk emphasized the importance of democracy in one of his speeches in 1933, saying that the Republic should enforce all the requirements of democracy as the time goes on. Regardless of your viewpoint on Ataturk, you cannot doubt his sincerity as he once said, my mortal body will turn into dust, but the Republic of Turkey will last forever.